Hi guys, it's Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at a new little Playmaker script that I wrote that gets the lever action uh, angle. So, yeah, it gets the angle of a lever when you pull it in uh, VRTK. So once we have the angle, then we can use that uh, angle in a float compare and use um, some different actions. So if the, you know, the lever's up, then this happens. If the lever's down, then that happens, and so on and so forth. So it's a pretty specific use case, but I had a request in the Playmaker forum. Now, you might notice I have a little noise in the background. My daughter's home. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this tutorial anyways, just the same. So that's how it is today. Now, I've opened up the VRTK. So make sure you have VRTK installed. Make sure you have Playmaker installed. And uh, I have the uh, VRTK example scene here open, and it'll be under VRTK um, examples. And in the example scene, I'm in uh, 25. So everything should be set up for you already. And this is called controls overview. And controls overview is a good sample scene because it does already have um, some levers in it and they already have a lever script and I'm not going to go over how to set that up because you can just jump into this preview uh, example scene and see how it's set up but what you definitely want to do is go and find this middle lever which is the one I'm going to be using today and see how it's attached to the wall and see um, the angle and stuff like that. So it's not actually using um, a hinge joint or anything like that. It's just using a, a VRTK script even. And so when you pull this lever in the VRTK example, it shows here uh, on the wall in a display in a text mesh the angle that it's being pulled to. And so you'll see that in the example. Like for example, if you pull it down 40 degrees, it'll say 40 on the wall. If you pull it down 60 degrees, it'll say 60. Okay. So what we want to happen is when we pull it 40 degrees or 60 degrees or whatever, something to trigger in Playmaker, which is what we're going to use our script for. So we're going to target this middle lever. And I'm um, actually going to call the lever itself. Right now, so it's called leader, lever. I'm going to call it target lever so I know which one I'm targeting. And you want the one that has this, uh, the actual object here that has the VRTK lever script attached to it. It also has this control script, which is fine. You, you don't necessarily need that. It's just here. Okay. So I'm going to create a extra game object in my scene. And this game object will hold my Playmaker script. So I'm just going to go create three object, And actually, you know what? I'll just create an empty game object and call this... Um, lever script okay call it whatever you want it really doesn't matter now I'm gonna add a component and I'm gonna type FSM because I'm gonna add a playmaker FSM to this and I'll call my FSM lever angle you can call it whatever you want and then I'm gonna click edit and this will open the playmaker um, window here so I can do what I need to do now in state one I'm going to use a custom action that I've come up with. And you will need to download this from my GitHub account. So there'll be a link down here. So you download this action, throw it into your uh, Unity project here. And it can be anywhere in your project. It really doesn't matter. It will take a few seconds for Playmaker to recompile and find it and add it to your list. And that's fine. So just organize it however you want. and then you will find it in the action browser here. So I'm going to type lever and this is the one. This will be under VRTK. It'll be get lever angle. Go back to our playmaker, go back to state one and just say get lever angle. Now it's going to give you a little warning that says we need a game object that requires the lever component. So if I click here it's going to add the lever component to wherever this this FSM is which is this lever script object. We don't want to do that. We don't want to use this empty game object as our lever. So we're not going to use the owner. We're going to specify game object. Now what's the game object we want? The one I want is this one called... Uh, I thought I renamed it. I guess I didn't. 
we want this one called just lever up here, the middle one, right? We'll just grab this, drag it over, and now you see the red's gone away because it's it's accepted the fact that this lever object already has the necessary script. Okay. So we'll go back down here. And here now we have a field called lever angle. And when we pull this lever, it's gonna store the angle in this field here, which is a float. And if we look at the actual lever itself, it's set to only go between zero and 60 degrees. So that's fine for now. So let's, get, let's just test it out and then see how it goes. So I'm gonna need to click play. Okay, so as you saw on the screen here in the scene, it went down to 40.5 degrees. So that's 68% of the way down between zero to 60. So on the lever angle here, we have 40.5. So that's great. So this is exactly what we need. Now we can use this number to do a float compare and then it will tell us basically if it's on or off. So let's do that. Let's stop this. And we will, let's see the best way to do this. So let's set the variable at the beginning because we want to say that it's off, right? So we need to set a bool. And that's the very first thing that we're going to do. And why don't we call this, we'll make it a new state. This first state, we're just going to set the bool and we'll call this initialize. So in the initialize state, we want our light on is what we're going to call it. Light will be on and it's set to not on, right? <laughs> then finished. And then it goes to the next state, and this state is just going to have the uh, get lever angle, right? And then we need to do some kind of uh, float compare. Float change, float compare. Okay, let's try this. So we need to save this float into a variable. So we can compare, we'll call this uh, lever angle, is the name of our... Okay, so we want to compare it to... We want to know when it's on, so we want to compare it to say 60 degrees, but we don't want it to be all the way down to 60, we just want it to be down maybe to like 50. So when it's at least 50, then it will trigger some kind of an event, right? So we want it to be every frame because we want it to always be checking if it's 50. And if it is equal to 50, it will go finished. Or if it is greater than 50, it will be finished, right? So finished will go to a new state. And in this state, we will want a, what do we want? We want to set that bool again. And now, the light is on. So we can call the state light on state. Why don't we call it light on state just so we know. And let's add a finish for when this is finished. Now that it's on, we wanna maybe, for example, play a sound, right? So I'm not actually gonna set up the sound here, but you could just go play sound. You can put your audio clip in here you don't need to change anything else. And so when it goes to here, it's gonna go play the sound. And then what we wanna do is check to see if it goes back up, right? So I'm gonna have a, maybe a next frame event, so it fires off to the next section. So after all this is done, then in the very next frame, it will be finished again. 
and we want it to go back to this lever angle compare. But this time, we don't want it to compare 50, we want it to compare like closer to zero because we want it to compare back to the other way, right? So we'll just copy this, paste. And so when this is done, we'll go back to get lever, we'll call this one get lever angle on, and we'll call this one get lever angle off, okay? So now it's checking to see if it's off, and for our float compare then we want it to be, say, less than 10. So not greater than 10, but equal to or less than 10, we'll go finished, and bring us back to our initialized state. So now, as you can see, it just flows back from one to the next and so on and so forth. And each time it will compare to see if it's going to work. OK, so we might need a next frame event here. I'm not sure. Let's just do one anyways, though. OK. Now, um, when I'm in VR, I, I won't be able to see this so easily, right? So let's maybe um, actually make a light so that this can be, actually do something so I can see what's going on. So under my, let's see here, under the lever, let's have a light. And we'll make a, uh, I guess a point light, right? I can see where it is, it's huge. Okay, so this point light will be up here. Maybe let's make it like red or something so I can see it easy. And we'll make it smaller, but we'll make it really intense. I don't know if that'll work or not. Will I even see that? <clears throat> okay, I'll see that, there we go. Okay, so let's, um, how do we change that? Let's just do the easy way. Do the cheating way. Okay, so the point light, we'll just um, drag it here and uh, say set light intensity. So we want the intensity to be, say, 8. Right? And then we'll copy this one. Copy select action. And the beginning we want it to be off, so we'll go back to the beginning. And then uh, paste after. We'll set the light intensity to be zero, so that should do it. It should be off and then on. Okay, so hopefully I didn't make any mistakes here. I guess we'll find out in a second. Um, I'm gonna save the scene. And let's push play and see what happens. Right, so there you go. That's how you can use a lever to turn things off and on. You can set a bool for this to be off and on, so you can use this bool in other places. You could set this to be a global bool, right? So you could have, say, five or six lights, and each bool could be light on one, light on two, light on three, and so in another FSM, you could use those lights. Okay, you could also do at the very beginning here in the initialized state, you could hit do a little bool check. Okay, so I think the person who requested this, would, this might be able to help them out. So imagine we had a, um, just go to variables, we'll make a global varia, variable, and I'll have a bool, and we'll call this like, um, Like lights, okay, right? So 
maybe somewhere else in the game we have a bunch of things we need to do and once those things are done then this bool becomes positive right but for now it's negative because the user hasn't done all of the correct actions right so at this very beginning we can just use a simple bool check or a bool test here and add it at the bottom which bool we're going to check if the lights are okay if it's true we go to finish if it's false we do nothing so let's get rid of this next frame event so now and we'll turn this on every frame so if it's true and things are okay then they can turn the light off and on if it's not true, flicking the switch off and on won't do anything. So say, for example, there's no electricity. So this allows you to set something else up uh, elsewhere in the game to set a condition for this to happen or not happen. So maybe you have switches that you need to turn or whatever, and they're not done correctly. So until they're done correctly, this bool won't change. Okay, so there you go.